I coach service providers about YouTube with my paid community. In this tutorial, I want to walk you through exactly what you will need to design when you create your first YouTube channel. Without further ado, let's hop in. Over the years, I have had many different visual aesthetics on Bootstrap this device. If you've been with me for a very long time, you will know that years and years and years ago, this channel was actually called The Blossom Network. The reason why was because my marketing company had a flower in the logo and I was trying to make that work. Now that I am in the phase of business where Bootstrap Biz Advice is not just the name of this channel, but also the name of my app and my LLC, I wanted to change the visual look. So this is a great opportunity for me to kind of take you behind the scenes and show you what I had to update with me transitioning to this new phase of business. So the first thing that you're going to see at the very top is your channel art. Every single channel has the ability to customize this area. If you don't add an image there, it will just push everything up to the top. So this gives you an opportunity to communicate information to your new audience, and it's very easy to customize this in YouTube. The center area of the cover art is visible on a cell phone and the left and right areas are visible on the desktop version of YouTube. So keep that in mind when you're designing your graphics for your channel art that you want to put the most important information in the center of the graphic and then supplement that with what you put on the left and right hand side. So in order for you to know the proper dimensions for this particular Canva design, I would click on the right hand side and bring up the back end of your YouTube channel. This you'll be able to find if you go down on the left hand side under customization and click on profile. So you can change the banner image. You can also change that profile image. And so I would encourage you to customize that. Obviously your profile image is cropped as a circle. So just keep that in mind when you upload it. And it's best if the graphic is at least 98 by 98 pixels or four megabytes or less. So for your channel art for best results on all devices, they want you to use a graphic that's at least 2048 pixels by 1152 pixels okay keep that in mind when you're inside of canva because you don't want the design to be too small that when you move it over to youtube it's not legible we've talked about this in previous videos about how to organize your canva account but you want to make sure that you have a folder that is set aside for all the social media cover art that you may need to make for your business so when it comes time to update things, it's very easy for you to click through and remember which designs you'll need to create. So in this case, I have one that is called cover art dash YouTube. And you can see here that there are multiple different variations of that cover art, whether I was marketing 25 days of Canva and I wanted to change it or I simply updated my branding. That is what that design is for. If I were to create this from scratch, I would go into the Canva template library and I would search for YouTube channel art. YouTube banner, there's also the option of a live stream YouTube banner. Either of these will help you out and create a design that is the right size. From there, it's going to populate some design options on the left-hand side. I would encourage you, especially if you are a Canva Pro user, to take a look at the premium templates for you. If you don't currently have a Canva Pro account and you would like access to one free for 30 days, you can always go to lashondabrown.com slash Canva. But when Canva does prompt you at the top, I want you to click on see all because often based on the designs that you've created in the past, you may see a template that's a really good fit for you so you don't have to start from scratch. So as I start to look down and see the different options, something like this is way more in line with what I would like to do with my design aesthetic. Something that's simple, something that's modern and not super colorful. From there, like every other Canva template, you can change out the text and change out the photos. When you're done, just click on share and click on download. Again, this will be big enough 
to fit the dimensions that YouTube recommends. And once you download it and upload it to YouTube, you may find yourself in a position where you're tweaking the design slightly to make sure what you would like to see isn't cropped off when the YouTube crop occurs. So I'm just gonna show you using this as an example what I mean. So we'll go ahead and download this to my desktop and I'll upload it to YouTube so you can see how your design will be cropped. So for example, you can see that that entire area of the graphic is viewable on TV. What's viewable on the desktop is what's on the left and right hand side. And what's viewable on all devices is this area here. So if there was essential information that I accidentally put too far over to the left, by seeing it in this preview, I could make the change in Canva and re-upload. I will tell you, this is the one thing on YouTube that I see people tweak the most because the cropping isn't intuitive. So don't beat yourself up if it takes you two or three iterations of your channel art. It will be worth it in the end. Just make sure you look at the preview, look at what's cropped off, and make sure that you make those modifications in Canva before you publish it to your site. Now, another area that I think is not customized enough is the video watermark. So at the bottom of your profile page, you're going to see that option. The watermark will appear on your videos in the right-hand corner of the video player. And when people tap on it, it will give them the prompt to subscribe to your channel. It's a really easy, nice touch to your video. And if you have a watermark or a circle version of your logo, this would work perfectly for this area. You can choose the duration and then you can simply upload a design from Canva. What I tend to do is just start with an Instagram square template and then drop in the design there. The most important thing you want to remember is to save it as a PNG with a transparent background. I already have variations of my logo uploaded directly to Canva, so all I need to do is click on brand, click on see all, and then select the design that I'd like. So in this case, this is the favicon that is used in the app store for the app. So I'll just simply drag that to fill the space. That is a Canva Pro feature, so you'll have to make sure you have a Pro account in order for it to not save the white background behind your watermark. So we talked about the channel art, the profile picture, and the watermark in the bottom right-hand corner. The next thing I think we need to talk about is your thumbnails. Now on my channel, I create a variety of content. It's not just Canva tutorials. Sometimes I'm talking about tech tools, other times I'm creating Pomodoro timer videos, and I also do live streams. So as you start to look through my thumbnails, what you'll begin to see is each type of tech tool has their own template for my YouTube thumbnails. Now that is something that I've decided to do along with having the t-shirts for the brands that I work with, but you don't have to do that for your thumbnails. What you do want to make sure of is that you have a system to keep your thumbnails consistent. So when it's time to post a video, you're not struggling as to what you need to create. Now, I did stumble across a really easy technique when I was doing my Canva tutorials this year and I leveraged Magic Media to create my backgrounds. And so all I needed to do was cut myself out of the background, create a new background in Magic Media and change the text here. So that was the system that I used for those particular tutorials, but you can easily make a format for yourself. One quick note about creating thumbnails in Canva is that you don't have to create a brand new design every time you create a new thumbnail. So say for instance, you are building playlists on your channel. In my case, I do Canva tutorials and I have a lot of them. So instead of having a separate Canva design for every video that I do, I create a thumbnail within the same project. You can have hundreds of pages and one design in Canva. So I would encourage you to do this instead of creating individual projects so that your Canva account doesn't become chaotic. So I am able to repurpose past thumbnails because I have them easily available within the same project. And that's a very quick way for you to continue churning out thumbnails with ease because you have a system in place. 
Another thing that is really useful to design in Canva is an end screen. In the last 20 seconds of your YouTube video, you had the opportunity to drop in elements that are clickable for your viewers watching. I will typically drop in the ability to subscribe to my channel by clicking on my profile picture, and I will recommend that they watch another video after they complete this one. This has truly helped me to get more views from the same people within YouTube. So if you create this end screen in Canva and you include it in your video editing process, all you need to do is to drop in those clickable elements within the YouTube editor. When you're ready to create your end screen, I want you to search for YouTube outro. That is going to pull up a category of templates for you to choose from. If you want to start from scratch and just want to make sure it's the proper dimensions, you can start by clicking blank YouTube outro on the left hand side. Now, when I scroll down, I found this one that I really liked. So that is the example we'll be using. Once you click there, you may also see some additional options pop up under more like this. When you're ready, you just click on customize this template and you have some options. Now you could just have this as a photo within your Canva design that you drop into your YouTube editor. However, this particular design is actually a video, so it features some animation. So if we click play on this, you can see that there is some movement involved and it takes about five seconds. Because you have up to 20 seconds, we're going to extend this to 20 seconds. And so when we're done customizing this, putting in our own branding, then we're going to export it as a video file. And that is what you would import into whatever tool you're using to edit your YouTube videos. The same thing would apply to your YouTube intro. What a lot of people will do is at the beginning of their YouTube video, they will ask people to like the video or subscribe. And so if you would like to add that to your YouTube format, then search for YouTube intro inside of the Canva templates, click on one that you feel like is a good fit for your branding and customize it to fit your need. So both the outro video and the intro video would need to be included when you edit in order for it to be present in your YouTube content once you upload it. So for this example, I'm just going to click on play on the left hand side and all this animation is already done for you where it brings up your name, clicks on subscribe and then clicks on the like and the bell. So for those of you who don't have an animation background and designing something like this yourself would be really complicated. This is a very simple way for you to elevate your YouTube channel by simply leveraging Canva. So I hope this video gave you some ideas of ways that you can customize your YouTube channel to make it more on brand and more professional for your needs. If you have anything else that you would like to design for YouTube that you have a question about, just let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you don't already have Canva Pro and you would like to get access to a free 30-day trial while supporting the channel, go to LaShondaBrown.com slash Canva. Until next time, ta-ta for now.